I keep it real You already know the deal And I don't care how you feel Cause I just gotta keep it real And this has been us All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Real Wrestling Roundup. With me this week, I got a virgin for the show, Aaron. Aaron, tell us a little what you do for Real Wrestling, and how's your day going? For Real Wrestling, I am the second half of the Scottish Brethren. Now, myself, I run the um, Predictions League with Craig and Tony. I also cover um, news on a Monday and a Friday, do SmackDown reviews, and between myself and Jamie Lee, we cover um, the reviews for WWE. But obviously, I cover uh, for Craig on news when he's not available either. And um, my life, I just work quite a bit. I'm just not long finished work, so. And, but I'm looking forward to next week because I'm obviously me and the family we're away on holiday from next Monday, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, so let's start off with layoffs in the WWE. They laid off almost entire uh, departments. From what I've seen, the most notable name was Dana Warrior. She was with their yes. program. Um, Aaron, have you noticed anybody's name? Because I do know they had some upper levels, or you surprised no talent? The only one I... <laughs> Other than that, from when the merger happened, I think, I can't remember the guy's name, and that's silly, I should have thought of this. Um, I think he was originally meant to be uh, on the border when they did the, the transaction, the change. He was one of the ones that got the bonus like Triple H did, but he's now no longer there either. Yeah, and I know that they just finalized their fifth WWE board member. Um, I don't remember that person's name, but like I seen one thing where it said that there was a t department of 20 people that's now down to three. It's mental. I didn't I, I didn't I expect it. Like I knew that with a the merger there there potentially be cuts and stuff. Um but I didn't expect it to be to the scale that the way it has been done. Like I expected maybe like three or four, but not the fact that these departments are now just ran from 20 people to three. Uh, I'm just wondering how that's going to work f uh, across the board for both, like obviously UFC and WWE, how, how it's going to work collectively with having three people for just these roles now. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's people on the UFC side that they're still there, so it's not going to be just three department, three people per department. It's just you only have those three people that knows the wrestling side of it, and then you're going to have people that know the UFC side of it. So there's going to have to be some cross-training, essentially. Yes. Um, so you mentioned that you help with the WWE reviews. What's some of the... Yes. What's something that interesting have or something interesting that happened with those this week that's been in the news? Well, I, I wouldn't say there's there's been a f not a through a pay per view as such, but obviously um, on Raw on Monday night um, at the end of the show we got the return of Nia Jax, um, which I wasn't expecting. There was rumours that it was going to happen and stuff, but me before this is my personal opinion. I think before the purchase was confirmed to TKO and them being all under one umbrella, I think that was Vince's last act before, obviously, it, the purchase was finalised. But it looks like from what I've seen on Raw that obviously, um, she, if I remember rightly, she uh, got involved in the women's match and it looks like they're going to potentially build for with Fastlane coming that she's going to take on Rhea Ripley, I think, for the belt. Yeah, and I can see that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Nia Jax. There's a lot of wrestlers I'm not a huge fan of. Um, yep. But I do know that when she was with the company previously, she was considered very dangerous. Like Yes. 
And so that that's my big concern. Hopefully she's did a few extra training. Um, I know when she first exited the WWE, she was talking about just being a model. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, but sticking with Nia Jax and her family, The Rock also returned on SmackDown. Yes. He did. Very, very happy. But I bo- I, th- I, expected it. Just because um, I'm sure the day before, because obviously Pat McAfee's show is now run by ESPN. Him and his friends just used to do it on YouTube and stuff. I think they still do his um, show that they do on um, YouTube. But obviously he's went under the umbrella and they've went with ESPN as well. So because of the fact that The Rock was actually on his show in Denver, and the fact that McAvee himself potentially said, oh, it, well, WWE's not far away. So because I just put two and two and got five myself thinking, well, they're in Denver. Wherever they are in Denver, they can't be far away from potentially where SmackDown's going to be. So is The Rock actually going to potentially show up? And he did. And the, the pop he got, I was, I was very happy. It's like I watched, I'd seen it in the May midst of that morning before I went to work because I'd, I'd been on Twitter and I was like I should have just waited and watched it but it's early hours of the morning here like in the UK so I watched it 7pm 7 7am 7 sorry my time like just to let my son and obviously like he loves Pat and his I wasn't quick enough to capture it but his jaw dropped when Pat actually came out and then when the Rocks music came out he, because it was so early I think if he watched it later on he probably would have did what most fans would have actually screamed the house down. He just his jaw dropped to the floor as much as say he's back. So I was like, I got what I kind of expected. I would have got if I, there's a return from him for certain wrestlers. And I mean, that's part of what it's all about is like the kids losing their yes mind and stuff over like, oh, this person's back. This is like, I mean, The Rock definitely is a nostalgia pop for like someone our age, but like. The kid's getting into it. That's really the cool thing. Um, now, I've read that with The Rock's return, he also mentioned that WrestleMania 39, it was locked in that him and Romans was supposed to go at it. And that didn't yes. happen. Are you... I think um, it was... I think it was because um, everything was locked, but they had to agree on how, how it would go about, obviously, with work commitments and stuff and obviously at the moment there's obviously there's himself and obviously we know that Cena is around until mid-October so because of the writer's strike I'm just hoping just because he was in the area I'm hoping this is more than a one-time deal for The Rock and it wasn't just because he was there if you know what I mean I'm hoping that he's going to be around more than just this one appearance but I have the feeling because they were in the area it may well just be that one appearance I mean I kind of hope not and I kind of uh, same. I mean, like you mentioned, the writers' block or er, strike. I don't know if The Rock's even got any upcoming films because I know that was the big thing for his previous thing is, yeah, writing. So or not writing, but filming. So yeah, maybe we'll get that next or that big WrestleMania match, Roman versus Rocky. Hopefully, I, I would love to see him at Mania in Philly. And taking on um, as much as I would like to see Cody take the belt off him as well, but I would love to see Rock. Or even if they do what they've done before with two people, like over two nights, he potentially fights him one night, and then the next night he fights Cody and loses the belt on night two. That's that's fantasy booking on my part, but you just never know. Oh, I don't see Roman doing two nights. Uh, no, neither right do I, because uh, he's not around at the moment, so. <laughs> You brought up fantasy booking. I don't know if it's a like legit leech thing or just some person came up with it. But I just, before we started recording, was reading that there's a whole big two, three year plan for Cody where he came back, he lost Roman and comes back. He can rock faces Roman while Cody faces like a noose over something. And eventually it leads to yeah. Roman, Cody taking the belt. So. You're potentially not too far off on seeing the Cody. I would love it. The thing is, like I've said to, to Craig, who was speaking about this with Cody, because we've just mentioned Cody, um, I think um, 
obviously this reminds me of when the same thing similar happened um because i've seen the, i don't know if you've seen the clip but it was after he lost he's sitting in the ring and um, i think it was summer slam if i remember rightly he lost he didn't get the belt but it reminded me uh, what happened to john cena like years ago a similar reaction sitting in the ring the way he's sitting was exactly similar to to cena and then obviously cena had to go through many different hurdles many different superstars to before he eventually got to the big one and got the bell again so i think that's maybe the way the story seems looks similar but obviously he wants to finish the story to get it for because it's a bell that his dad never got and i totally get it and, and stuff but i just feel this to me reminds me of at the time when cena was about um, i know he's back but it remain the story the way that match ended and the way he's kind of going about just now it's kind of it has me thinking the same as oh wait a minute this this has got elements of when it happened to john and it's now happening to you so i mean it doesn't hurt to retell the same story but you can't just like my biggest complaint about mjf is up until this friend thing it was and even the friend one still is a repeat he had like three stories that he would do in succession and they won't they don't necessarily take a yep. long time like this cody story is so like it doesn't have you can retell the same story it just can't be so close together i mean you're talking about when john cena did it that's at least probably been three four years minimum yes exactly so like they could even if they had the characters they could probably even redo like the macho man well probably not the macho man jake the snake where the bite with the viper or not the viper but the cobra like they yeah, could yeah, probably yeah. do something similar to that, but like that's an iconic moment that they won't be able to redo type thing. No, hundred percent, one hundred percent. Now you'd mentioned like when you mentioned WrestleMania, it made me think of like the Access Weekend and Access Week stuff. Um, you actually brought up another thing. An all-star weekend. Tell us what you've heard the rumors about that might be. So basically, because um, the with the buy over, um, obviously Tony Khan, not yeah Tony, no Nick. Sorry, not Nick. Wrong, wrong. Nick Khan was asked um, if there were um, if there's in an interview if there's the potentiality of because um, UFC uh, generally has events as well. It was a potentiality of uh, like a. Uh, a full like weekend so he said like if they could have say smackdown on the friday night a ufc event on the saturday and then obviously culminating it and using a a ple because that's what they're now calling them on uh, wwe having the premium live event on the sunday and um, they've said that there's discussions have, have started to talk about that but it's obviously if they get the background from wherever it may be it all depends on if the government want to do it as well. But I think if if they're going to try and do that, I think um, it would uh, be interesting to see how it all comes together and if if they can manage to capitalise. Because obviously, um, I know um, WWE have tried it already um, themselves before this merger because obviously they had SmackDown um, on the Friday night um, in London and then obviously they had <clears throat> excuse me, Money in the Bank the next night in London. So I'm wondering if that was them trying to think, well, when the buyout happens, could they potentially go down that route of having like UFC one night, well, SmackDown UFC and then uh, PLE? Well, I mean, they used to record some, or Raw and then SmackDown. So, and I mean, whenever they had a pay per view, they would have that premium live event, then Raw and SmackDown. So, like, they've been built to do that before. It's just, how would the UFC work? Because I know here in the Oklahoma State yeah. of Oklahoma, the regulations about that, because we have a sporting commission, like, yeah, they have, I think, 90 days to get, like, blood work and all that in there. So it yeah, really yeah. depends on how often they're going to have UFC events and when they're going to yeah. have them. Because another interesting fact about the UFC stuff is – in the state of Oklahoma, like you do a wrestling show, anybody can be backstage. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. It's really loose. UFC, you're the fighter and the coach in this 
state commissioner. They're the only ones back allowed in that locker room. And depending on which sports yeah. commissioner you get, they will kick someone out. Just Even if they have a promoter's license, they don't care. They're like, these are the people that are supposed to be in here. They're real strict about that. So yeah. it, it's going to be interesting if they do that All-Star Weekend, if they package them together or how they do that. Yeah, it will um, be. So speaking of all stars, Brian Danielson has been talking oh, about. Yes. He made a deal with his daughter. I think her name is Birdie. Yes. That by the time she's seven, he's going to wind down his real big active wrestling career. And she turns seven this year, is what I think I read. Um, yeah. How do you feel about Danielson winding down his career? I think because he's made that promise to to his daughter. Um, obviously, we know what happened with him in WWE, and then obviously he's came over to AEW. And I, I like him on both. I liked him when he was on WWE, and I absolutely love what he's able to still do um, in AEW. Um, and I think if he feels for him, if the time's right, that he should start to wind down. But I, I believe if he does, is he not meant to be, when it happens, is he not meant to be still involved in like an ambassador role of some sort with an EW as well, uh, well when he eventually does decide to hang hang them up? From what I read is once he winds it down, it's not a retirement. It's He'll still be like a special attraction, probably mm. wrestling at like all in or all out, um, full gear, like one or two times maybe three four times a year and then he'll be like doing backstage stuff um yeah Tony Khan had actually said that if anything happens to him he'll want brian danielson to run the wrestling aspect of the company so i can really that see that is that, wow yeah i can actually see him taking over like some of the more creative i know definitely I because just, like, you remember when he was in wwe and when he was like the gm and what he was doing as gm and stuff like when he was there and i thought to myself well what if he has a cre- the creative process in the mind what if later on in life he decides actually he could go in and take run a run a business run the company for someone else so that's interesting to hear and it, i think it do if that was to happen he'd do very well i mean you mentioned danielson as gm for wwe like that was even with not as much creative control as he has with AEW. Yeah. Like, so that would be interesting to say the least. Yeah. Um. So, have you started doing any or catching any of the? Real wrestling trivia that we've been doing on Tuesdays yet? Yes, I've I think I've seen the the one that Craig did. I missed uh, Jamie's one uh, because I was busy and stuff. And I think we not meant if I've read it right or wrong. But we not if we do it, we not meant all like at some point all of us that are involved take a shot attempt to do this quiz if that makes sense. Yeah. So for those of you listening, Tuesdays, I don't remember. What exact time? I think it's like 1 central for the U.S. I think it's 7 p.m. for UK. I'm sure it's 7 p.m. for us, for UK. Yeah. I'm 100. I may be wrong as well with Hyman's, but I'm sure it's 7 p.m. We've started doing a trivia, and we do it on our Twitch stream and other live platforms. Man, I think it's kind of fun. Um, uh, yeah. And then, it makes us different from others and stuff, if you know what I mean. Um, what we are trying to achieve as well. Oh, sorry. Which, <laughs> which I know are talking about this um, trivia is a little divergent from our normal wrestling coverage of the news. But, like, there really wasn't much in the way of the news this week. I mean... No, not really, no. I found it hard. Like, obviously... <clears throat> We we Craig being away with the guys and stuff. I found it hard um, trying to pick st- like f- cover stuff and look at things that I felt um, might have been different or thought. And it's like thinking and looking at him, thinking, well, if someone's done a review for that, they might know that in the review because they've read the review. 
So I'm thinking, well, why would I cover that if there's a review for that show? You know what I mean? With the news, if if something's happened, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll leave that because there's a review going up in that, and that might ha- ha- happen in the review. You know, yeah, and I mean, you don't want to put out spoilers sometimes because if you've not, if the review's not up, but you've done news and you've put it out there before anybody's read the review, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like the only two things that I can think of that was newsworthy that we didn't cover today was the dyads gone from the WWE, but like even then, like it really yes. depends on what are they going to do next? Because um, like they were cool to me, like with their little gimmick, but like other than that, there was nothing for me on them. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is Jade Cargill, like. But then it's all just rumors. Um, it is, and that's that's the thing is I seen that and I'm thinking, don't want to put it because I'd love to have her back. I would love to have her back in WWE, but at the moment, as we say, it is just rumors. And I'm thinking, well, do I, do I maybe put something out and think, well, wait a minute, what if it doesn't happen? And then you've, you know what I mean? You've put it out there saying, actually, this is potential. And then it, it, you've shot yourself in the foot because, wait a minute, it's not happened. Yeah, it's definitely a very tight wire to walk when you're trying to cover news, but not spread rumors. Um, yep. And so, like, say she does jump ship, how big an impact do you think that'd be on AEW? Sorry? How big an impact do you think that'd be if she did actually jump ships? I, this is a thing. I think it would depend on how she would be used. The thing is, I the product went stale for a while. And obviously, I think that was just because of what was going on. And I, I still believe when I watch WWE, it is a little stale in certain matches. You know the outcome of what's going to happen before. But I love, I know that with the change with, to TKO and stuff, that Vince um, is still overall control. But obviously... Triple H is still going to be creative, but obviously in the process, he could still get in touch, whether it be remotely or them sitting at a writer's table and say, like, like what he used to do, like make a change, like the day of the show, and some things might get cut and stuff. Um, so it depends, as I say, um, if if she were to go back, it'd be great, but are they going to put her straight to the main roster or are they going to put her into NXT? It's the, it's which way they, if it happens, which way they think that she should be used. And me personally, because I've seen her on AEW, I've seen her matches and stuff. I think if she was to come back, she needs to be in the main roster, either on Raw or SmackDown, personally. Me, I don't think there's a need for her to go down the developmental route to go to NXT because she's made it for herself within EEW, if you know what I mean. You see, I disagree. I think she should go to de- developmental. Like, her matches she had didn't go more than, like, five minutes. Of course, that, that seems to be okay for WWE. But, like, there wasn't much yeah. substance to her matches. Um, so, yeah, I, I would think if she jumps ship, she needs to go to developmental. She needs to probably even be off TV for a while to get some better wrestling skills, to be a more entertainer yeah, yeah. of the matches. Yes. Um, and then you said something while you're talking, and I didn't want to interrupt, but I had a point about it. And now I've gone brain dead about it, so that sucks. Um, so, um, so another stream that we do is the gaming streams with Nathan on Thursdays. Yes. Um, have you got any streams with him? No, well, I know I haven't because generally speaking, when I come home from work, I finish at five. I'll come home and um, I'll see the kids. And then because I've been working all day, I'll just um, want to either sit and just chill and, and stuff. But whereas if there's a night, I'm thinking, no, what? There's something I want to do. I'll go on and I'll just have a look. And if we're streaming, I'll, I'll pop in, even if it's for an hour, just to see who's doing what and stuff. So... Any of Nathan's, I'm not going to lie, I haven't been on because by the time I've got in, I've just been, if we've been busy, I've just been tired and I'm thinking, I just, I'd rather sit and do nothing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But he mainly streams classic video games, so if our viewers are interested in the classic video games, they can go ahead and join those streams at like 
7 p.m. UK time. I think that's 1 p.m. Central U.S. Standard Time. And, I mean, that's where it gets me is, like, that 1 o'clock area, because I'm at work at that time. But Yeah. Which does save previous recordings, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Um, do you, what's your next stream that you're going to be doing? Because you and Craig do watch-alongs, or do you know yet? Watch longs, yes. Uh, so then, I think the next one, uh, potentially, Craig might be doing uh, along with Tony. I'm not sure because um, we can't always get together because obviously WWE premium live events are on a Saturday. And when I'm at work, I generally work all weekend unless I'm off work. Um, and what, what I love about it is the fact when they do shows either, whether it be in the Saudi, Saudi Arabia, or like when obviously the um, AEW, they had the, the show in Wembley, because that was 6 p.m. my time, I was able to actually sit and watch it live and be able to be on a watch along with Craig, but whilst actually doing the review for the show at the same time. So I, I prefer it when it's earlier for us, and that's me being cheeky and silly, but, but obviously I, if I was off on a Monday, I would stay up on the Sunday because well, obviously the, the events for WWE used to be a Sunday before the start of it. But a Saturday um, at, at that time at night, if I'm starting at nine on a Sunday morning, there is no no way I could stay up to 4 a.m. and watch it. So I think the next one for WWE will be Fastlane. And I'm, I'm not sure if we're both getting together yet because obviously I think the day before I just get home from holiday, I'm not sure what the plans are because we haven't agreed anything. But I think if we are, um, he'll either be he, we'll either be at mine or his, and we'll potentially do one for um, Fastlane, which I think is in three weeks, and WBD still haven't built any matches for Fastlane yet. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned possibly Nia versus Rhea being built up, so... Yeah. I mean, th- look at how Tony Khan did all out. Like, he had a, less than a week, and he built... Yeah, I know. Matches. It's not mental. Ne- not necessarily matches that drew you in but like yes you built them. um i think that's all i got for us today aaron you want to give us any last words uh before we go on i don't think i've got anything else i think we've more or less covered everything for being first time being here so it's been good um and hopefully obviously if time permits if we if needed and it would be that t- at the same time we were on tonight I'd be happy to jump back on but obviously it can't always be on just because of the times and stuff we're working that so all right I'm Johnny and this has been Aaron for your real wrestling roundup thank you for joining us and you all have a good rest of your week uh, uh, I'm just keeping it real homie I'm just keeping it real yeah 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 uh. I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this has been us keeping it real on the Real Wrestling Podcast.